Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe here. Another random video. Okay, so this video I want to talk about is basically how I got this animation of the wolf here. I uh, imported it into Element 3D and pretty much I uh, actually came across a few situations that I had to fix, right? It wasn't complicated, but I did, you know, spend some time and I learned a few things. So I want to keep the momentum going and sharing what I learned because, I don't know, it, for me doing these kinds of videos, it influences me to learn new stuff and keep it going, right? So win-win, right? So definitely subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Now, now you already started a new composition. You know, blank 1080p, but 1080p. For the most part, I usually um, do any type of like animation, 3D animations at 30 frames per second, mainly because I do not like the look of 60 frames per second. That's one. And also is Instagram at the moment, if you try to upload a 60 frame per second video, they cap it at 30 frames per second, right? For the most part, I do 30 frames per second, less frames, less render time is quicker. Also, by the way, if I look like I'm fucking irritated, it's because like I re. I was kind of like starting to do this video and something happened. My capture just stopped. So I was like, fuck, I had to start all over. <laughs> so anyways, now another thing before we get started, we want to work with a frame display, right? So instead of having a time code showing you like the, the minutes and the seconds and all that, uh, when you're working with animations with 3D, for the most part, since we're exporting an OBJ sequence from Blender, we're going by frame number, right? So it's a lot easier uh, for me personally to work with, with a frame number being displayed, right? So to do that, you want to go to File, you want to go down to Project Settings, then you go to Time Display, and then right here you click Frames, right? Right here it gives you the option to either start at frame 0 or frame 1. I messed with this uh, wolf animation, so the file that I'm using in Blender, it starts on frame 1, right? So I'm going to stick to you know frame 1. Depending on your animation, if it starts at 0 or 1, be sure it matches in your composition and uh, After Effects, right? Or else you're going to have a little bit of an offset, right? You're going to be missing a frame. may not be that big of a deal, but, you know, if you're going through all this trouble, might as well make it look as good as possible and not lose any frames. As mentioned before, I like to get my models and animations from free3d.com. Uh, there's other areas where you can get, you know, find models and whatnot, but for the most part, I just come here because it just it's easier and... I don't know, I just, I, I always come here because I like it. <laughs> Simple as that. So I went to like the animated section over here and I clicked on that. And um, I got a few things here, but the thing that caught my eye was the wolf. Uh, I've been mainly doing a lot of stuff with humans. So I want to like start messing around with like animals and whatnot. So I got the wolf guy here. And we got a bunch of formats here that we can click on or to download, right? Now, since I use Blender to like export an OBJ sequence, uh, the file pack that we want to download is the Blender RAR. So we're going to download that. As you can see, I already downloaded it before. So downloaded like another copy. Yours should be named like this, right? Also, uh, one more thing. Be sure to look up 7zip.org. And like uh, you want to get this. Uh, it's a free shared software. Um, I like to use this for, to extract files, uh, especially RAR files. It just, I don't know, it does a good job. All right, so we got a RAR here. Sorry if I'm saying that weird. So I did a right click. I'm going on a 7zip. I'm going down to extract files here. And there you go. Double click on that. And right here, we got three Blender projects. And the Blender project that we want is the Wolf with Baked Action Animations for Export. Double click on that guy. All right, and that opens up our Blender uh, project. Before I go any further, um, I'm no Blender expert in any way. Um, when I look at this shit, I'm just like, ah, the fuck. I like, guess just as freaked out as you guys may, may be. But uh, for the most part, don't try. We're not going to do much. The one thing I probably am going to do is um, this little window right here. I want to change the display to timeline. And as you can see, it says here, it starts at frame 1 and it ends at frame 17. Now, that is pretty important to like uh, keep that in mind, like how long your animation is. It's basically saying that the animation it starts from uh, frame 1 and it ends at frame 17, right? So if I hit play, you can see we got like a loop here going, right? So yeah, it is important to know how many frames your animation is. So that way, when you export it to... Um, after Effects, you have like the right time length in the sequence in your composition. That way you have a good loop, right? That way, like, you know, it doesn't like cut off in the middle of a, of a cycle. And which I'm going to show you how to like make sure you get like a nice loop. So we're going to hit Alt-A to stop that. We're going to go over here and we're going to click on the little camera. And that's going to change the render settings. So again, we want to make sure we're at 30 frames per second, which we are. Let's just start frame 1 and at frame 17. All right, everything is good. We don't want to mess with anything. We just need a blender to export an OBJ sequence. So now we're going to go up to File. We're going to go down to Export. Then we go to Wavefront OBJ. 
I'm going to go to, I already have a bookmark here or system bookmarks, whatever works, same difference. I'm going to, but uh, I'm going to create a new folder by clicking this guy here. I'm going to name it Wolf Tutorial. As you can see, I already have like a few animations here because I was, I've been messing around with this thing a lot. So Wolf Tutorial, double click. Now you want to go down here. You want to make sure you check on animation, right? Because the is going to export only a single frame, but we wanted to export the whole timeline, right? Which is like uh, from frame 1 to frame 17. Another thing you want to do is you want to go down here, and we're going to change the scale. Because remember, in Element 3D, the, the measurements are by pixel size. In uh, Blender, they go by centimeters, right? So if like the model here in uh, Blender is 10 centimeters, and uh, Element 3D is going to be 10 pixels, so it's very tiny. So obviously, we've got to like, scale it up. This model has shown... After messing around with this thing, I got to scale it up by 100 just to get like a pretty good size and like element 3D. Now this guy, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to name it Wolf. Keep it simple. So I'm going to hit export. Your mouse is going to turn into like weird lettering. When it goes back to this window, that means it's done. So minimize that. Let's minimize all this. All right, so we're back in After Effects. Now, I'm going to right click, go to new, solid, and I'm going to say E3D, you know, for element 3D. Hit OK. I'm going to go to my effects here and go down to video copilot and I'm going to click on element and drag it in here. You know, this is my layer that I, you know, created for this, uh, for these tutorials that I do. Now we're going to go to scene setup. Now we're going to go up here to file, import, import 3D sequence. I wanted to look at the desktop. Here's my folder. There's a wolf tutorial. That's the one I just made. Double click, click on the first one and hit open. Everything should be okay. Hit okay. And there you go. I mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again. When you export into an OBJ file, it's going to lose some detail. That's just going to happen, right? As you can see here, how different it came out to be. You know, it's pretty blocky, you know, it's not as smooth and all that. If you compare that to the model in Blender, you can see it's definitely a lot more smoother. I mean, it's still kind of a low poly look, but I mean, it looks obviously smoother also. As you can tell, we got the fur and all that stuff on uh, our model here in, the, in Blender. But all of a sudden, it disappeared here in Element 3D. You know, certain things got messed up, so we need to, like, uh, put everything back in this place, right? Now, if we go back to our downloads folders where we where we extracted our files for Blender from the RAR, on the folder, folder that it extracted, the textures are right here. So we got the body, the got the eyes, and the fur that's in the chest area of the wolf, right? And what we want to do is we want to find the wolf body, which is this, as you can see. And we want to dry, drag the body wolf JPEG onto the diffuse here. All right, so far so good. Now, as, one thing, that, as you noticed, it looks very glossy, right? So we need to make some changes. Like, I don't know, I got messed up when the import is something. So in this case, to see the glossiness is very high. Let's just drop that. The specular multiplier, same thing, just drop that. Maybe leave it as one. The environmental multiplier, same thing, it's pretty high. Let's just drop that. We want a little bit of a reflection with the fur, you know, obviously because, you know, hair is naturally oily or whatever. As you can see, my hair here has a little bit of a reflection. So that's pretty much what the, the specular is right here. So let's leave that and maybe the multiplier 50, the environmental multiplier at two, you know. I mean, it's going to need some texture. So I'm going to go back to our wolf body and I'm going to drop this to our normal bump. And you can see the difference. All right, not bad. Let's see, reduce the normal bump a bit. Yeah, there we go. As you can see, the hair, the fur that's around like the face and the chest area, it's definitely wrong. So let's see, we're gonna go for the fur. It's that one. We're gonna get a material. We're gonna drag it in the diffuse area. And here is where I start to come across with problems, right? I was like, dude, what the fuck is this shit? Basically, you can see what they did was, if I go back to Blender, they made like little planes for the fur area and then they added like a transparency. That way you can see like the furs, right? Like the like little patches of hair. You know, this is pretty much what they did, right? However, when like uh, I open this up in Element 3D, there is no transparency, right? Because this is, this is a JPEG. You, now you can actually go to the event setting and you can adjust the blend mode to add or screen. But as you can see, because uh, it has a white background, the material, it doesn't look that good. I try messing with the modes and, you know, nothing seems to work. So what we got to do is basically we got to, let me reset that. What we got to do is basically we need to remove the white of like the fur material and basically just leave like the streaks of like the black fur here, right? Let's hit OK. I'm going to right click here in our composition, go to new. I'm going to click a camera. Uh, let's do 28. 
Can I hit OK? Now, as you can see here, we got our wolf here looking all fine and dandy. Pretty cool, right? I'm going to create also a background just to just so we can see what's going on. Background, going to leave it gray. All right, that way it's like easier to see what's going on. So now, pretty much what we need to do is go back to our downloads uh, folder where we opened up our textures. I'm going to click and drag the wolf fur, the wolf fur that it came with. Drag it inside my Element 3D uh, project. Now we got the wolf fur, as you can see up here. Now I'm going to click and drag it down here and create a new composition. Because in Element 3D, you are able to create your own like custom textures, right? So that we need to do is create a new texture. So man, but it has to be pre-composed. So we're going to click and drag the newly made comp composition that has our fur. Okay, as you can see here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to double click on our composition to open it up. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to add some filters, right? And the first one that we're going to add is a Luma key. If uh, you notice this little yellow thing, pretty much is saying that this uh, key is mainly designed for a 16-bit project. But since I'm at 32-bit, uh, it may not be as accurate, but don't worry about it. It's fine. So on the key type, we're going to hit key out brighter. As you can see here, it took out too much. So we're going to uh, crank up the threshold to get more of that detail back. I want to get as much as a white I can, but at the same time, I'm going to leave it looking pretty spiky, you know, to uh, represent the hair. Uh, edge thin, let's do two. Edge thin, let's do one. Edge feather, I'm going to crank that up as much as I can. I'm going to look for a matte choker. Let's do a refined soft matte. Basically, what I'm trying to do is I want to get rid of this jagged edges, so I do like the refined matte, soft matte. So that should be good. Let's do a 0.5. Now let's see that point three. Okay, that's good enough. Now as you can see, we still have some white, uh, right? And it's in between the black here because it didn't get it all out because it's a JPEG, you know, low quality image. So what we, what I did was basically, I'm gonna get a tint filter, drop that in here. Black, we can leave it alone. But the white, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get kind of like a light darkish brown to represent the hair, something like that, right? So basically now what we have. It's basically we got like the dark hair, which is the roots and everything is in between. It's kind of like a, like a darkish brown. That way it kind of blends in better, right? So this represents our hair, our, our fur. So now we're going to go back to our wolf main composition. I'm going to uncheck this, which I just solo did. Uh, we don't need to see it, so I can uh, unclick that. Now we're going to go to our element 3D layer. We're going to go to custom layers. Then go down to custom texture maps. Then on layer one, we're going to select our wolf fur. Now we're going to go back to scene setup. We're gonna click on our wolf fur, go to diffuse. We're gonna click down on the arrow here. Then we're gonna select the custom layer one and hit okay. As you can see, if for some reason you're like, what the hell was it doing in that? Pretty much, you know, you thought like you got rid of like the background. But what we gotta do now is, you know, we're having like our, our fur selected. We need to go to advanced where it says alpha threshold. Just crank that up to one and there you go. Actually, that looks really cool. Definitely looks better than the first the first one I did. Now, if you want to get a little bit more detail, you can actually crank this up, the alpha threshold. It goes from value of zero to one, so you know, whatever you want in between, it's almost like it's almost as if you're kind of like you know it's growing out the hair, you know. So you can you can mess with that. That's cool. Obviously, we want to get rid of like the glossiness. So pretty much what we're seeing here is the um, environmental multiplier. So let's drop that kind of like we did with like the body. Let's drop that to two. I want to drop the specular multiplier down to maybe say 25. Like I said, we want a little bit of reflection, but not too much, right? And let's do 20 on that. All right, I'm going to leave it, the specular multiplier to 25, and then like the environment multiplier to 10, right? Just so like the hair can have a little bit of uh, reflection. Another thing you need to do, if you can see here, we got we got hair here, right? Wrapping around the wrapping around like the body. But if we go here, you can kind of see the hair disappear. So now we want to make sure again, select the wolf fur, go to advance. You want to go down here to draw a back face. And there you go. That way, like uh, pretty much you can see like uh, the fur being wrapped around the, the head and all that. And that is looking slick. I like it. Again, you can mess with it. Like if you want to like change the color of the hair and all that stuff, you know, you can do that with the tint, you know, instead of black, maybe change it to whatever you want. Uh, you know, stuff like that, but, you know, trying to, like, go through this video. I'm already, like, at 20 minutes doing this, sh recording this shit. <laughs> Might as well finish with the eyes, you know, we can, like, I don't know. You know, I'm gonna leave the eyes white. It looks kind of cool. And the teeth, actually, let me see. I'm gonna go to my pro shaders again. 
for the claws, I'm gonna just pick like I'm just gonna pick like a dark color. I mean, as long as it's black, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I added my material to the nails here, but as you can see, it's too uh, too much reflection, so I'm just gonna drop that down. I don't think it needs to be that reflective whatsoever. The teeth, uh, I mean, you don't see the teeth, but you know, just to keep things consistent. I mean, I guess I can use something that's white. I mean, you can barely see it, but whatever. I'm just gonna go with this material because it's kind of like teeth-like ish. I guess I'm gonna drop down the the speckler, and that should be it. I don't know, I like the white looking eyes. He looks like a fucking zombie-ish wolf or something. So I'm going to hit OK. And boom, there you go. Now the only thing we need to do now is basically right-click, go to New. I'm going to add a light because uh, since we removed a lot of his uh, reflections from his hair, you know, he's not receiving a lot of light. I'm going to hit Ambient. I'm going to hit kind of, a, or kind of a warm color here. Now I'm going to crank this up pretty high, probably intensity to 500. Again, I'm just, you know, I want to get through this video, so I mean, like, uh, whatever works for you, you know, go for it. That's just the ambient light. So now if I, you know, play this, there you go. And for the final thing to teach you in this video is basically, as you can see here, when it reaches the end of, like, the video, it does, like, a pretty good loop, right? It doesn't stop in the middle of an animation. Now, the thing is, um, Instagram, mainly, uh, you, you need to have a minimum of three seconds. Uh, to upload a video, right? If it's under three seconds, it will not upload it, right? I need to make sure that my composition is three seconds long or a bit longer. Now, again, we're going back to our animation from like Blender. And as you can see, it's, it starts from frame one to frame 17. So that means we got 17 frames, right? So to do a little bit of math, we want to go right click, go to composition settings. Then pretty much uh, right here, we want to see what's the duration of our composition, right? I already did this, but I'm just going to show you what I did, right? So... This project, or the animation sequence, is 17 frames long. My composition here is a 30 frames per second uh, comp. So obviously, every second, there's 30 frames. So what I'm going to do here is basically, since I, this animation loop is only 17 uh, frames long, if I times that by 2, then that's 34 frames that we have here if you double. So in, that, in other words, for every second of my 30 frames per second composition, this thing's going to loop twice. Now that we want is basically a three second long uh, project file. So I'm going to take this number and I'm going to multiply it by three because I want to represent like the time length that I want, which is three seconds. So in total, I'm going to need 102 frames to make sure that all the frames that are imported into my project here are used. You know, that way none of them get skipped. As you can see, I already did that. I'm putting here in the duration from zero to 102 frames, right? At 30 frames per second. So I hit OK. So as you can see, now it's a perfect loop, right? So... Obviously, uh, I just went through all that just to show you because most likely if you have another uh, animation sequence that, uh, you know, that way if like your project is different, if you have maybe 10 frames or 30 frames or whatever, then, you know, you need to, you know, make sure that you figure out how much frames you need to make sure you get a good loop, right? That way when like the project here reaches the end, it loops over, like it starts, you know, and it looks good, right? Because then like in Twitter and you know, in Instagram, when like the video stops, it starts all over and it makes like a constant loop, right? And it looks cool, right? Also, if you want to do like a GIF or something, but anyways, that's basically it for this video. It was a bit much, but I mean, yeah, it is pretty cool. Like I said, I mean, I just did this kind of quick. I didn't do much color correcting or whatever, but I just want to get this out of the way of what I learned doing this thing. So have fun. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all the shit and yada, yada. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe. I'm, I'm trying to make myself, I'm keeping myself motivated to make more videos, right? Doing this kind of stuff, you know, so your uh, support and your comments and all that stuff does uh, help me continue making this kind of stuff to help you out, right? So anyways, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. Take care and peace.